الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين <تصفيق> علي على محمد وعلى محمد ربي ينتقنا بالهدى وألهمنا بالتقوى أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجاء إخوة يوسف فدخلوا عليه فعرفهم وهم له منكرون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم أما صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I know you've been fasting for 25 days but that salawat was quite weak yeah, Can we have a loud salawat please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad I'm going to keep doing that until one day I don't have to anymore inshallah um, I'd like to thank Imam Habib for coming in today and for speaking to us. I've known him for about a year, year and a half now. And um, that is most of my time in Canada because I've only been here for about two years. Um, he is the secretary of the Canadian Council of Imams. This is um, an organization which uh, meets once a month with all the Sunni and the Shia Imams gathered together and they discuss issues that are taking place. And he's the secretary of that um, council um, and he is doing good work in prisons and hospitals as well. So inshallah any assistance that we can provide for him it will be much appreciated. And I thank you for coming to our center and welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. We continue with the tafsir of Surah Yusuf. Uh, we have reached now to about verse 58 to 62, inshallah, we'll try to cover today and a little bit more if there's time. Um, as you remember, there's 111 verses in this surah, so it's a quite long surah. We're about a little bit more than halfway there, um, and we'll try to get through it as much as we can. So the point that we've come to now is where Yusuf is out of the prison once again, and the king has offered him any position that he wants in his uh, government, and he has chosen to head the treasury. Now once he decides to head the treasury, uh, we jump, we fast forward about seven years. And in these seven years, the fulfillment of the interpretation or the prophecy of Yusuf has come true. There have been seven years of really good harvest. They have been able to harvest a lot of pro uh, pro products. And Yusuf, being in charge of the treasuries, convinced the farmers in Egypt to sell him, yani the government, the produce that they create. Instead of selling it to different people, he convinced them to sell it to him. Obviously, he must have paid them a good price. But the reason for doing this is they wanted Egypt to be stocked with food because there was an eventual drought that was coming. Seven years passed by and then the lands began to dry out. There was a major drought. There was no rainfall whatsoever. Not only did this affect Egypt, um, but it affected the nearby lands as well. Obviously Egypt was prepared for it because they had taken the necessary steps to save food. But other lands who were not aware of this major drought coming, they were suffering. And one of these lands that were suffering was the land of Canaan. Canaan is where Yaqub salam used to live or lived with his children. Canaan was northeast of Egypt, maybe around Palestine or somewhere there. Um, but this is where there was a major drought taking place there as well. So Yaqub salam advises his children and he says, you know, I've heard that in Egypt they are selling food, they have saved food and they're selling it. Why don't you go and purchase some food and bring it back to Canaan because we are soon going to run out of food. So he sends his 10 children and leaves Benjamin with him. He does not send Benjamin with his brother. Remember, um, very beginning we said that Yusuf and Benjamin were brothers from the same mother, while the other 10 children were mother, uh, brothers from a different mother. So he sends all 10 of these brothers out towards Egypt for them to procure some food. Now this says in history that the journey itself from Canaan to Egypt took about 17 days. Now how they were traveling, maybe through camel, um, <coughs> I don't think they would be walking, but let's say they were traveling through camels. So camels travel for 17 days is how far Egypt was from Canaan. <coughs> now when they reached Egypt or Misr, um, 
before they were entered, they were allowed to enter into the castle of the king and the Aziz. Uh, they were made to sign their names on the dastur, on the sheet of visitors. Yeah? So this was a custom that used to happen in Misr. So they signed their names, ten brothers all signed their names. And then before they were given audience to purchase their meals or purchase the produce, this list was provided to Yusuf salam. And Yusuf at this time realized that his brothers have now come to him, fulfilling that promise of God. Remember, when Yusuf was thrown in the well, what did God tell him? He said, there will come a day when you will remind them that they threw you in the well and they will not know who you are. And this is exactly what God says. After some years, <coughs> The brothers of Yusuf came and entered his presence. He recognized them, but they did not recognize him. Again, did he recognize them through the names? Most likely. Would he have recognized them through face? Probably. Yeah, this is ten brothers. He probably would have recognized them. Very interestingly, why did they not recognize Yusuf? Right? Um, there are two possible answers. One is a very simple answer. Look, it's been 40 years. He was seven when they dropped him in a well. Um, who knows what a 47-year-old man compared to a 7-year-old kid would look like. The second reason I think you can combine both of these together is that not in their wildest imagination would they have thought that he would have become the Aziz of Misr, the governor of Misr. Yeah? Um, they may, maybe if he was out, they saw a homeless man on the street. Yeah? They said, maybe that's Yusuf, but not the head of Egypt. Um, combined with these two factors, they did not recognize him. So the brothers entered um, and they bought the ration that they needed for the family. At this time, obviously Yusuf knows who they are, so Yusuf begins to have a conversation with them. He asks them who they are, where they're from, and they begin to reply him, obviously not knowing that this is their long lost brother. Um, they say that we are ten brothers, we are the children of Yaqub, we come from a lineage of prophets from Ibrahim and Ishaq. Um, then they informed Yusuf that um, they have left their elderly father and their youngest brother at home who could not make this journey. So Yusuf, obviously, maybe trying to see where this conversation is going, began to ask questions about his father. So he begins to ask that, why did your father not come on this journey? And why is it that your youngest brother remains by his side? So they began to tell him that, you know, that he... Uh, my father, our father is old now and he's gone through a lot of difficulties and he's weak and he's sad and my youngest brother takes care of him. So now Yusuf again finds an opportunity to ask a further question. So he asks them, why is your father sad? Yeah? What is it that has happened in his life that has made him sad? And they give a very interesting reply. They said, well, when we were younger, one of our brothers was eaten by a wolf. Yeah? And because of this, this made my father very sad. It's very interesting, right? Because this is the lie that they've said for so long that eventually maybe they even believe that lie now. So maybe that's the reason why they didn't even think that this is Yusuf, because they've believed this for so long. So obviously Yusuf knows that this is not true, but he knows at least that his father is going through difficulty. We can ask a very important question here is that, why did Yusuf hide his identity from his brothers? But I think a better question than this would be that Yusuf has been in Egypt now for seven years, right? I mean, he's been in a position of power for seven years. If the guy wanted to take a vacation, he could take a vacation and go tell his dad that, look, I'm alive and I'm okay. Why had Yusuf not taken this step? to go and tell his father Yaqub, who was suffering at his departure. I'm sure Yusuf was feeling grieved at being away from his father as well. That why did he not go on this 17-day journey and just comfort his father and come back? Yeah, this is a very important question to ask. And there are many explanations given, but I find that the most comforting one is that God did not give him permission to go. Yeah? We have to understand that Yusuf being um, taken away from his family was not only a test upon Yusuf, it was a test on Yaqub as well. Right? And God did not want Yaqub's test to end yet, nor did he want Yusuf's test to end yet. Hence this permission that was required from him being the prophet of God did not come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and tell his father. Yani the test of the Firaq or the distance between Yaqub and Yusuf was to be continued for some time longer for God to really see what Yaqub's um, result would be from these tests. Now, 
Usually, Yusuf would only sell one bag of food per person. Or one, um, you can say one bag. So it's not a small bag. It's a large bag of grain that they would be giving per person. But because these brothers of his had informed Yusuf that there was a father and an additional brother who could not come because of illness, Yusuf generously provides them two more bags of ration. Yeah, so instead of giving them 10 bags of ration, Yusuf provides them 12 bags of ration. But then Yusuf takes this opportunity to try um, and bring his brother Benjamin to Misr as well. So then he tells them, when he had furnished them with their provision, he said, bring me a brother that you have through your father. Do you not see that I give full measure and that I am the best of hosts? So now Yusuf is saying that, look, you're going back. Um, I need to make sure that you have a brother. Yeah? Because if you do not have a brother, people here will start talking and saying that I favored you over them. Right? So you need to go back home and come back with your brother so that it's confirmed that there is an extra brother and that you are not lying to me. And on top of that, Yusuf gives them an ultimatum and he says, if you do not bring him to me, there will be no more rations for you with me and don't you ever come back towards me. So he adds a bit of fear in them as well, saying that, look, there is a drought. We are the only ones with food to supply. If you do not bring your brother back to me, don't ever come back here for food again because you will be cut off from me. The brothers complied and they said, we will solicit him from our father, that we will surely do. They sounded confident. Yeah? Um, they sounded confident that their father will let Benjamin come with them. Surprising where this confidence is coming from, uh, when they betrayed their father once before. But this was this confidence that they had. Lastly, before they left, um, Yusuf does something very strange here. Um, the money that Yusuf collects from selling those 10 bags of food, Yusuf um, asks one of his servants to discreetly put the money back in the brothers' suitcases or the bags which they had brought with them. Yeah? So it basically, um, for all intensive purposes, he gave free food to them. Right? And Allah describes this in the Quran. He said to his servants, put their money in their saddlebags. Maybe they will recognize it when they return to their folks and maybe they will come back again. So Yusuf was not just relying upon his brothers or the threat that he had made. Yeah? That if you don't come back, you don't bring your brother, I'll never give you food again. This may have worked, but Yusuf did not want to take that chance. So to make sure that they would come back, he puts the money back in their bags. Now this was a sign of generosity. This was a sign of openness. And this was a sign of uh, uh, building a healthy relationship for the future as far as Yusuf saw it. So Yusuf put their money in that bag, or the servants did, in hopes that they would come back. And in hopes that um, he would be able to convince their father um, some more. So now the brothers go back. Yeah, sorry I'm rushing through this. Yeah, I have I think three more lectures left after today. And if I don't finish, um, it will be tragic, you know. So let's try to finish it. So the brothers return back to Canaan. And once they return back to Canaan, they are excited that they secured food. Not only are they excited that they secured food for themselves, but they are excited that they got two more bags on top of that, which normally would not have happened. However, they were concerned about the future. Yeah, they were concerned about how they will get more ration or more food in the future, especially if their father does not give permission to Benjamin to come. This is very interesting. And this is how man works, isn't it? That even though they have 12 bags of food, they're already worried about the 13th bag of food. Yeah? I mean, this is the way we work, isn't it? We, uh, we're eating lunch and then we're already worried about what dinner will be when we haven't even finished having lunch. We all work through our stomachs, subhanAllah. Um, so they come to their father. And they are concerned about what will happen with about the future. So they come to their father and they say, when they return to their father, they said, our father, any further measure has been denied to us. So send our brother Benjamin along with us so that we may be treated as customers and we will look after him. 
Yeah, so they come to their father with this request. Naturally, um, the father was apprehensive, isn't it? The father was not going to just say, okay, yeah, take Benjamin. Remember, he loved Benjamin very much. Um, and he was not about to trust them with another child. So he says, how dare I trust you with him, except as I entrusted you with his brother long ago? Yeah, and you want me to trust him the same way that I trusted Yusuf to him, to you, a long time ago? And then he says, فَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ حَافِظًا وَهُوَ أَرْحَمُ rahimin." God is the best of guardians and the most merciful of the mercy granters. What is very interesting is Mufassirun said, why did he say this last statement? That God is indeed the best guardian. خَيْرُ Hafidin. Um, they say, two, there's two opinions. The first opinion is that he gave them permission after they requested. Though he first gave them a very strong no, then he gave them permission and said, God will protect him. Indeed, he is the best of protectors. But the second reason, it was not this. Yaqub is here still talking about Yusuf. Yeah? That he has a belief that Yusuf is alive and this is merely a test from God. And he continues to say that God is the best of providers for my son Yusuf. And that makes sense because he mentions Yusuf right before that, doesn't he? He said, the same way that I entrusted Yusuf to you, God is his protector. Then... The children go into their room, so they still have not convinced their father yet. I mean, as far as most exegetes are concerned, they go and unpack from their trip. When they open their bags, what do they find? They find the money has been returned back to them. Right? So then they come to their father, excited. When they open their baggage, they found their trading goods had been returned to them. They went back to their father and said, Our father, what more do we desire than this? Yeah, um, This merchandise of ours has been returned to us. We shall supply our family, look after our brother, and add a camel's load to it besides. That should be such an easy load. ذَلِكَ كَيْلٌ yasir. So they went back and they pleaded to their father from this side now. They said, look, that Aziz, that governor is a generous man, that he's an honorable man, and he trusted us and gave us food, gave us extra food based on trust, and he returned our money back to us. He's not going to do anything to Benjamin. Send him with us, and we promise to take care of him. However, Yaqub again was not entirely convinced unless until more and more prodding took place from his sons. Finally, he caved in. Yeah, and he was about to send his brother, his son, Benjamin out, but on a condition. And that condition was, I will never send him with you until you give me assurance before God that you will bring him back to me unless you have been ambushed. Yeah? So he puts a clause out there. They say, look, if something bad happens, okay, Allah is in control. But otherwise, I want a promise from you, a mawthikam min Allah, that you promise by God that you will bring Yusuf I mean, sorry, Benjamin, back to me. We can ask a question here is that, why did he trust them after all these years? Ask yourselves this question. If you were ever in this situation and you trusted your child to somebody and God forbid something happened to that child, would you trust another child to that person? The question is, yeah, it's a tough, tough question. And the, and the only answers <coughs> that we can give is that it's been 40 years now. Yeah? Maybe some of that pain has dwindled down. Maybe his relationship with his children has become better after 40 years. Um, and maybe he has seen the, the signs of regret from his children. So maybe he trusted them. And another reason on top of that was this time was it, it was not for play. It was to get food and provisions for their family. Last time it was for play. If they wanted to go play with him this time, I don't think he would have sent them. But this time it was for this reason. And then once the brothers agreed, they said when they had been given their pledge, he said, God is the trustee for what we say. So Yaqub salam ends in this way. And then inshallah tomorrow we continue with the children reaching Egypt and what takes place now between them and Yusuf. وآخر الدعوان أن الحمد لله رب العالمين رحم الله من كرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة تسبقها بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد.